I already explained your background, Joker, before you arrived, but I will say a few words extra. Uh, much of your work is related to time and memory, uh, and I read on your website uh, a quote which said, against the spirit of the time, she explores the importance of rest, boredom, waiting, important conditions for creativity and thinking since antiquity, that have lost their appeal somehow in these economic times. So, the word is to you, time is on your side, at least for 45 minutes. Our experience of time has been fundamentally changed during the last hundred years. On the one hand, there seems to be an acceleration of time. Everything seems to move quicker and change sooner. And on the other hand, there is a growing sense of lack of time. Technological development has led us to a strange paradox. The more time-saving machines we have developed, the busier we became, the less time we seem to have. That is strange. How come? What produced this lack or scarcity of time? I think that the rather strict time regime of Western economics, introducing the fabric clocks, the timetables, the fixed working hours, and the time is money principle, has increased this pressure on time. We seem to run after time, and time seems to run after us. And while running, we seem to have forgotten, that's the main thesis of my book, that there are at least two different time concepts. Western and Eastern philosophers throughout the century have tried to describe. On the one hand, we have the time we measure, and on the other hand, we have the time we experience ourselves. Or, to put it in other words, we have the time of society, of economy, of science, on the one hand, and we have an inner experience of time on the other, which is far more difficult to describe since it expresses not a standardized or measurable time, but only a time that stretches along more subjective patterns, so to speak. This other time dimension can be experienced mostly during moments of doing nothing, of waiting, of resting, of boring, of inner reflection or deep concentration. Then, time no longer follows a linear direction, present and future, are no longer separated, but seem to intertwine. Over the past few years, this difference in worldly clock time, so to speak, and the inner experience of time has been the subject of my books. The time of clock has become a rather abstract and social time, something we have established in order to organize the world, manage international transport, do business. But as soon as you disembark from this socio-economic time that rules the world, like I did again this summer while staying two months in a tiny village in a very sleeping valley in France, you experience immediately another time experience, without clocks, dates and hours, but only different gradations of lights from the delicate morning to the intense and blinding blue light of noon and the dusky shades of evening. That's all there is, day in, day out, sun rises and sets again. And although this might seem to you a bit boring, this uninterrupted flow of time, I always experience during this summer that this time provokes, apart from rest and calmness, a profu profusion of thoughts, fantasies, experiences and memories, and form together really the new material from my new novel I'm writing. And there's more. Although over there I hardly know what day or what hour it is, I do have the impression that finally, after my very busy life in town, time has become mine again. 
So however complex the phenomenon of time is, my suggestion in my book, Steal the Tide, is in fact rather simple. Since the introduction of Greenwich time at the end of the 19th century, our lives have more and more been ruled by the clock. We have forgotten that besides having time or not having time, we also are time, as the French philosopher Henri Bergson puts it. This internal or personal time is difficult to label or pin down because it cannot be expressed in common units, such as hours or minutes. On the contrary, it can only be experienced if we leave this thinking of time as a clock, or as William Faulkner wrote, the American author, clocks slay, in fact, time. Time is dead, as long as it is being clicked off by little wheels. Only when the clock stops does real time come to life. So this inner experience of time is seen as the real time, much more real or truthful than the clock time. And although very little can be said about this internal time from a scientific point of view, I do believe it's time to start focusing on again. My point is not to exchange clock time for inner time. What I suggest, to put it very shortly, is to give a cont contemporary interpretation of a very old Greek idea, in fact, that time has two faces. On the one hand, there is chronos, from which the word chronology derives from, it's the linear, the measurable time, the time we can measure in order to structure our world, in order to be able to have this meeting here at this time. But on the other hand, and you find this idea in many old Greek philosophers and poets, we have this very mysterious concept, which is called the kairos. I don't know whether you've ever heard about it. Kairos is the other face of time. Kairos is the not chronological, not measurable, not exterior time that's structuring the world. No, Kairos has been seen as a kind of an interruption or intermezzo on the Kronos, on chronological time. It's also, for the Greeks, was Kairos the holy moment when the gods interfered in human existence and tried to change the stream of events. Kairos was therefore be seen as the kind of a divine inspiration. And why is the thesis behind all the essays in my book that talk about this inner time, this Kairos, in art, with the paintings of Rothko, for instance, in music, in the compositions of someone like Simeon ten Holt, in the works of Proust, who is constantly à la recherche of this interior time, this temps perdu. Virginia Woolf, who maybe is the most experimentary author we've ever read, tries to write it down, tries to approach this kairos, this experience of inner time. Because and that's the other main thesis in my book. It's, it's one of the, how do you call it, fundaments of humanity. Yeah. Probably only humans make this difference. Probably only we know the difference between Kronos and Kairos. Probably only humans depend for their humanity for the humanness of their humanity on being able to make this difference. And why? Because this Kairos collects a number of phenomena, experiences, which in fact are 
the, our source of inspiration in order to be able to create something new, to have a new thought, to make a new design, to think of something new. So I think this Kairos, I, I like it, this idea very much, and I think indeed what you're saying, it's a dialogue between the mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, but, uh, but what I feel is the two, I feel some sense subconsciously that you projected some kind of characters to Kronos and Kairos. So Kronos was like the accountant, yeah. and Kairos mm -hmm. was the artist. And I think actually mm -hmm. you say, well, Kronos is like being physical, Dime, I think actually we should be a little bit more generous. I think mm -hmm. also there, there's, uh, there's more life to it. Mm -hmm. And also I think Kairos actually can kind of have various incarnations. Mm, of course, he has. All and so one yeah. could be, you know, to, for, to be for two months in a s sleepy uh, French village, which can be ex exceptionally uh, inspirational and Is creative. that a way to you to get to new yeah, ideas? Yeah, sometimes. But sometimes it's going uh, to uh, a, a gathering of friends, where, which is completely mm -hmm. hectic. And then, you know, but the, the, the ideas are buzzing around. And uh, you have the same idea of kind of time slowing down, but in a very, uh, from the outside, it looks very hectic and, and rushed. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. So I think there are, uh, I, mean, there can be, I think the most important thing is, mm -hmm. I think that was your, your message, to become your own master mm -hmm. of your time. So mm -hmm. I think that, that actually is, but I mm -hmm. think... Do you still feel that science. that's the case with you also? Sorry. Are you still mastering your own time? But you, well, you have to act actually. Uh, well, I wrote actually a column in the newspaper about it. I think mm -hmm. actually you have to have some kind of good alternation of the two. Yeah, absolutely. And yes. uh, I think you too, you you enjoy mm -hmm. your sleepy mm -hmm. village mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there is some other period of uh, the year that you're not in the sleepy and village. And I love the world at the same time. So yeah. it's always it's both. It's because that was why what I was wondering about. To yeah. me personally, for instance, deadlines are almost vital. Yeah. You need a sort of pressure. Because otherwise nothing will happen. Or is that not the case with you? Not with novels. Nobody ever asked me for no? a deadline for my novel. They don't Thank give you a, a payment in advance <laughs> with a certain day to it. No, it's really co completely, uh, it's a product nobody's waiting for. Nobody is pushing me. And that's why it's maybe the, I like it so much to write yeah. it. But there's something else about this acceleration of time. It's true, even Augustine complains complained in the 5th century yes. that he was so busy. Yeah. Well, if he would have seen us now, yes. he would have been surprised, I think. Do you think but so? You know, it's not only working. Huh? It's not only that the work targets are being stressed all the time, that we have to do the same amount of work with fewer people, and that, we are, well, that work is so important, but it's all that we come home and we think, we take our rest, we sit on the couch, we put on the television, we go zapping for three hours. Yes. We think we are at rest, but our brain makes overtime. It costs a lot of brain energy to decode all the images uh, and all the messages sent to us through the screens of the television and the computer. So that's why you're so tired when you have been zapping for three hours. So I would say you could slow down the future not only by going to some sleepy village, but also by leaving the machines out, at least for one hour, try I it. think actually you, you have also, uh, uh, this actually I think it's quite an interesting research topic at this moment, right? So mm -hmm. if, the, if this kind of modern lifestyle is more productive or not. I mean, I mm -hmm. think at the end you can look back and say, you know, was this a time great novels were written, you know, great paintings were made, uh, mm -hmm. uh, big mathematical theorems proved. I mean, there, are, there are some objective mm -hmm. criteria. Mm -hmm. And I find interesting that research shows that people who do this multitasking, they are actually uh, very bad at various aspects. In fact, they're also bad at multitasking. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I, people I, who, I are, who are not doing this, if they're giving yeah. a task, you know, now you do 10 times at the same time, they're better in it doing this, mm -hmm. that are people who describe themselves as being as very good. multitaskers. Yeah. So I think that the, the, yeah. the, the only uh, actual mm -hmm. effect is, is that you think you are very good in mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, of course, is very mm -hmm. scary. Mm -hmm. If you all start to think that we are <laughs> absolutely genius, uh -huh. <laughs> well, uh, but we, we, we are the not, uh, then yeah. actually uh, yeah. uh, I think yeah. the whole society will be a poorer society. Mm -hmm. And one of the but I would say so. Of course, they, they, yes. I mean, what you should do is try to imagine uh, what, it, what all the theoretical models yes. of Robert and his colleagues mean. I mean, it, if I was a designer, I would dream of doing that, of, 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 of designing futurist 
uh, worlds, uh, this baby universe. I mean, I mean, you're, you're quite a good designer yourself if you uh, <laughs> make all these images. But I mean, they are inspiring, aren't they? Also, for for instance, the notion of schuim. What's schuim in English? Foam, foam. Foam by Peter Sloterdijk, one of the philosophers yes. I think is really interesting. Yeah. Also, for you to read is that the modern the times yet to come are more foam. We are all in our individual bells, but together we still form communities, which of course is very different from the huisje, boompje, beesje, mm -hmm. or gezin, as Hoeksteen van de Samenleving. I mean, mm -hmm. sorry yes. for that in Dutch. Uh, well, you know really, what we're talking we are far about. Uh, away from that. Thank you for actually bringing this forward, but because I do feel that, you know, in some sense, in our design, we are reflecting what we know of the world. Mm -hmm. And I often feel a little bit silly, you know, I'm, uh, we are studying like the universe, and it's like our universe, right? It's not only in a PowerPoint, it's actually around mm -hmm. us here. Mm -hmm. and, and that it should in some sense reflect on our own life. You mm -hmm. know, the, uh, mm -hmm. 2000 years ago, people would walk in the, and look outside and see the sky. They actually see the universe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now we kind of, we, we kind of put it away mm -hmm. and we see it on a PowerPoint site or something. But I think if it would in some sense, again, yeah. physically Absolutely. be present in our environment, I think it would actually help us in some sense. To make it in a sense more tangible, more, yeah, more actually, real. Why wouldn't we? Yeah. 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 Okay, may I'll I, give may, you a microphone. May I ask yes. just one, uh, qu one yeah? question? Go ahead. Because I have been uh, wanting to ask you this question for some time now after reading your books. Um, you want to, you, do you know you figure in one of my novels? Yes. Oh, you uh, do? <laughs> <laughs> and that you, then you were lecturing on time yes. in Paradiso. Oh, yes. you know that. Well, yes. What anyway. a shame. No, 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 <laughs> I didn't want to tell that. I have this question because in, I think it was then that you said that scientists like yourself, and yourself being a very creative mind, do not work alone anymore, but mostly work in communities. Yes. And that is for me as a philosopher and a writer so difficult to understand. I mean, I must always think about Simone Weil who says, a group cannot think. And but can I say something? Because yes. it's, it's about I'm, I'm, this I'm, interior and exterior. Yes, because, please. Uh, uh, you s well, we have this image of the human life as a soap bubble or something, but I feel mm -hmm. my interior life is often like a soap bubble, mm -hmm. and I have like a good idea, but I meet my colleague, okay. and he punctures the soap bubble, yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's... Uh, so, in that sense, I, I, I feel this external world can be just as part of the creative process as the internal world. And then it's... Uh, so, it's, it's this dialogue mm -hmm, mm -hmm, between okay. interior and exterior, and that's why I'm saying I'm in some sense have a much more pleasant image of this exterior world because I feel yeah. many people like my yeah, which yeah. are some sense it's your audience also and your yes. your colleagues yeah. but yeah. in some sense you are in discussion with yourself of course, of through course, this but of I need often yes. other people to yeah. do so but, but, probably, you, but you do probably, say probably you also build on what other people think within their bubble yes mm -hmm. and somehow or other you collect to collectively develop a body of knowledge yes but it helps I must say it does help uh, to have a uh, a more effective more an objective object that you're studying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a, que oh, a question. That's a question, yes. It's up to you. <laughs>